Welcome to the Revival Center of Paso Robles. We're glad you're here. Our prayer is that you'll be blessed and edified by this message and to be encouraged to live out the full potential of your faith. We are located at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California, and we invite you to join us each Sunday morning at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. To learn more about who we are and what we believe, please visit us at alphabeth.org. Now, please open your Bible as Pastor Gabe begins teaching today's Word. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, Go behind the veil and receive Holy Ghost spiritual truth. God, I'm asking one more time that you would afford me the opportunity to rightly divide the word of truth, Lord God. I'm asking, Lord, for your special anointing. Lord, the words that I speak, it may sound like my voice, but I pray that it be your words. I pray that you'll bless those that are in this room, Lord God, and those that are watching this by way of video. God, I speak, Lord God, uh, into the internet world that would watch this by way of video and tell you that this is your day, this is your time to start walking in divine determination. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Feel free to call us at 805-434-5170 or leave a comment on our webpage because we would love to speak into your life. I bless each one of you now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You want to be seated? Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about understanding destiny. And when, when we're going to continue this, because I, I, I'm, I'm sensing that there's something here that the devil does not want you to get a hold of. For people that have not been in the past few weeks, and this is really you're going to be hearing me say this week after week after week, there are two destinies. There is a primary destiny and there's a secondary destiny. The primary destiny is a destiny that God has set in place for everybody in this room, everybody in the world. God has not changed it. God said this in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before you were born, God says, I knew you. I recognized you before you were even in your mother's womb. And it was at that time that I ordained you to be a prophet. To the nations. Now I didn't say that. That's what God says. That That is God's view of you. Right now you need to understand that God views you as prophets and prophetess to the nations. Amen. Amen. That's what God wants. 
So if God is if, if God has set that up, then we need to start prophesying. Amen. If God knew me and God ordained me to be a prophet to the nations, I need to start prophesying, speaking God's truth to myself, and then start prophesying to the world. This is what God says. So the primary destiny is Jeremiah chapter 1 and 5. The secondary destiny is the thing that God has called you to do. There is something that you can do just a lot better than anybody else can do. Amen. So we find out what God has called me. I tell you, man, Maybe God, maybe your gift is to make tortillas. Then you just make tortillas. Amen. Hey, don't ask me to make tortillas. It's not my gifting. Okay? But the, the, some of you have been gifted to make jewelry. Some of you have been gifted to sing, and some have been gifted to preach, and some have been gifted to do a whole bunch of other different things. We need to find out what has God called me to do, and then I need to start doing what God called me to do, and quit trying to do what God has not called us to do. We need to quit trying to put uh, round pegs into square holes. Amen. Amen. That's the problem that the church has done over the years. We expect people in the body to do what we want them to do. So therefore, everybody should be a preacher. That's not true. <coughs> no, we need to find what God has called us to do. And over the years, Satan has been doing as much as he can to rob you of your destiny. And you all are says, and you are not too old to fulfill your destiny. Amen. 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 You're not too old to fulfill your destiny. It's, it's, it's really is time that we get with and I, I wish I had all the information here, but so many ministries, major ministries around the world, didn't even kick into overdrive until people were in their 80s. When everybody else is talking about giving up and quitting, you got men and women of God says, Lord, here I am, use me. And God starts sending these men and women to the nations. Okay? This is not the time Amen. to quit. This is not the time to retire. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to talk about the destiny of determination. Let me read to you something. I know some of you, because I've talked about it before, but I may not remember, but <clears throat> there's a man whose name was Cliff Young. Interesting story. Every year Australia hosts a 543.7 mile endurance endurance racing from Sydney to Melbourne. It is considered among the most grueling ultra marathons. The race takes five days to complete and is normally only attempted by world-class athletes who train specially for this event. These athletes are typically less than 30 years old and they're backed by large companies such as Nike. In 1983, a man named Cliff Young showed up to start the race. Cliff was 61 years old. He wore overalls and work boots. To everyone's shock, Cliff Young wasn't there to be a spectator. He picked up a race card number and joined all the other runners. The press and other athletes became curious, questioned Cliff. They told him, sir, you are crazy. There is no way you can finish this race. To which he replied, yes I can. See, I grew up on the farm. And we couldn't afford horses or tractors. And the whole time I was growing up, whenever the storms would roll in, I had to go out and round up all the sheep. We had about 2,000 sheep on 2,000 acres. Sometimes I would run those sheep for two or three days. It took a long time, but I always caught them to bring them in. I believe I can run in this race. When the race started, the pros quickly left Cliff behind. The crowds and television audience were entertained because Cliff didn't even run properly. He appeared to shuffle when he ran. Many even feared for the farmer's safety. All the professional athletes knew that it took five days to finish the race. And one had to run about 18 hours a day and sleep the remaining six hours. 
The thing is, Cliff Young didn't know that. When it was the morning of the second day, everyone was in utter surprise. Not only was Cliff still in the race, he had continued jogging all night. Eventually, Cliff was asked about his tactics for the rest of the race. To where it was disbelief, he claimed he would run the race through and finish the race without sleeping. Cliff kept running. Each night, he came closer to leading the pack. By the final night, he had surpassed all the young, world-class runners. He was the first competitor to cross the finish line, and he set a new course record. When Cliff was rewarded the winning prize of $10,000, he said he didn't even know there was a prize. He insisted that he wasn't entering because of the money, so therefore he wound up donating all his winning to several other runners. And this race continues to this day in Australia. He was determined. Say this out loud, quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. See, we, we've got to train ourselves not to quit. We live in a society that we quit on everything. So when it gets hard, we quit. So when, so, so when marriage gets hard, we get a divorce. So when kids really start acting up, we disown them. We go to a job, we don't like the job, we quit. We come to church and things are real good until the pastor offends you, then you quit. So we, so we raise a generation of quitters. Matter of fact, some of you are going to get offended because I just called you a quitter. So now you're going to go quit. That is not the answer. The answer is understanding that there is a destiny of determination. Amen. I, what God has called me to do, I am not going to quit until I've heard God say to me, well done. Amen. Amen. I'm into this for a long haul. People, are, people have said to me, you know, uh, uh, pa Pastor, you know, when, when are you going to retire? When are you going to quit? Uh, Pastor, the, you know, you, know you, you keep preaching every week and the, the, you guys aren't pushing the walls out. When are you going to quit? I'm going to what? I'm going to what? Quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. I'm in this thing to win. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 29 through chapter 12, verse 2. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying, to do were drowned. Uh, yeah, to do were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they combated seven days. By faith, the heart of Rahab perish, not with them that believe not, when she had received the spies with peace. <coughs> and what shall I say more? Uh, what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David also and Samuel and the prophets. Who through faith endured kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, Amen. stopped the mouths of lions, Amen. quenched the violence of fire, escaped the sword, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, whacked valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain the better, a better resurrection. And others had trials of screw, uh, mocking and scourging, yea, moreover, a bond and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn and sundered, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. For they wandered in deserts, and in the mountains, and in the dens, and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. 
God having provided some better thing for us, that they may, without us, should not be made perfect. Wherefore, seeing we are also passed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does not easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Stay there for a minute. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Everybody look at me. What you're going to hear this morning is that, that you, you are not in a sprint. <clears throat> this is an endurance race. Come here. The race is not to the swift nor to the strong, but to those who endure to the end. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Whatever you're at right now, God knows where you're at. God knows how easy it is. God knows how tough it is. If God allows you to come to it, then God has the power to bring you through it. Yes. Let me say it again. If as believers we truly believe that the steps of the righteous is God ordained, if God allows you to come to it, then God has the power to bring you through it. But as humans, I'm, I'm telling you, I know, it gets tough. I don't know if anybody else, ever, ever, anybody else in this room that you were at a place that there was a time you just wanted to check out. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seemed like the pressure of the world got so strong and things got so dark and dismal and every, every place you looked, it was just horrible and you just said, you know what? If, if, if I just take a 30 and blow my brains out, I'd be good. I don't know if anybody else has been there. That is not the call of God. Somebody needs to hear this. I don't want to talk in this room or somebody watch this by way of video. You are so close to your miracle. So everybody look at me. If the pressure right now is intensely hard, you need to know that you are so close to your miracle. This is where the devil is trying to get you to quit. This is where the devil is trying to get you to repel and back off. This is the time you do need to press in. Amen. Then I'm going to get back everything the devil has stolen from me. Double and, portion. And portion. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to get it all back. Someone say, I'm going to get it all back. I'm going to get it all back. Say it out loud. Come on. I'm going to get it all back. I'm going to get it all back. Amen. There's a song that says, if the devil knew what you would be after the storm, he would have never bothered you. That's right. Glory to God. If the devil really knew what you were going to become after the storm, he would have never bothered you. Somebody needs to hear this. You're on your way. Destination is a, is a life of endurance. Jesus endured the cross, despised the shame. Let's, let's just for a moment look at the humanity of Jesus. This boy, Jesus, he had to grow up and go to school with all the other kids surely being a bully. That's the boy who his mother is saying she'd never been with a man. He had to endure this. Joseph had to endure that. But you know, Jesus, Joseph, David, Jephthah, Samson, these men, these women, they stood their ground. Amen. We, 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 haven't, we haven't taught our society how to stand their ground. Amen. Well, you don't need to be in there anyway. Why don't you just get out? Maybe that's the very tool that God is using, not to make you bitter, but to make you better. Hello. 
Pastor, here's this. But how long are they put up with this? Ask him. Hello? Ask him. Amen. Oh, the Romans didn't put them there. The Jews didn't put them there. The Greeks didn't put them there. You put them there. It was my sin. It was your sin. And he, and he died for the likes of me. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Glory to God. You know, I, I don't know about you. I'm glad he didn't quit. Amen. Amen. I am so glad that, that when he said, Lord, if there's another way, you know, uh, let, let this cup pass. And Jesus said, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm out of here. I'm glad he didn't do that. But he was determined. Oh, my God. He was determined to get you back into the Father's presence. He was determined to get, to get you back into the Father's presence. Determination uh, always rides a storm out. If every time the wind blows, you go out there and start moving your sails, all you're going to do is get your boat to go in circles. you got to adjust your sails. I don't, know, I don't know how I'm going to get through this storm. But one thing, let me tell you something. Your percentage of getting through bad stuff is 100%. How do I know? Because you're still here. Yeah. Every bad thing that's come to your through your that has come to your life, you've gotten through it. Oh, Pastor Bob, but I was beat up. You might have got beat up, but guess what? You're still here. Yeah. Determination is a is a life of endurance. It's always rides out of the storm. Determination endures the pain. Real determination perseveres through the pain and opposition. Chase, put this up on the board. You can follow this, okay? Opposition is the tool that God uses to establish the spirit of determination in your life. Opposition is the tool that God uses to establish the spirit of determination in your life. Jesus warned us. He said, in this world, you shall have opposition. In this world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, because I overcame you too shall overcome. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I hope this is speaking to you. Because you're, you're in different places. We're all in different places. We're going through stuff. Somebody here, you just recently got a bad report from the doctor. Don't quit on God. He's a master physician. The doctor's only diagnosed, but God is a healer. Amen. 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 <coughs> Pastor, here's your saying, but uh, I, I don't know how we're going to make it. I don't know how you're going to make it either. I don't know how I'm going to make it. But guess what? I'm going to make it. We're going to get through this. Opposition is what determines our disposition, which will cause us to succeed and fulfill our divine position. I think he got that one up there. Or he will have it. Opposition is what determines our disposition which will cause us to succeed and fulfill our call and our destined position. It's, 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 it's amazing how the, how the enemy works. How insidious that spirit is. Thank you, Dorothy, that we took Friday off. You know, and we went and walked around Cambria and looked at the ocean, kind of a rainy day, and then went over to Morro Bay, and you saw me saw it on Facebook, the beautiful sunset that I took, pictures I took. You know, and we had lunch at the Thai place that evening, you know, um, because uh, 
for one for one of the things I can't remember was you guys gave us a, a gift certificate to AJ Spurs and we had dinner at AJ Spurs. You know, and as, as we I mean we I mean really we had a fantastic day. Amen. I mean really it was it was a fantastic day. But a lot of you know, you know, the, the swelling that's been coming up every once in a while on my lip and my chin, and you know, I have no idea. I've gone to the doctor, and, and the doctors can't tell me. Matter of fact, uh, my mellow granddaughter said to me, said, Papa, maybe she should go to the doctor. I said, I went to the doctor. What did they say? They couldn't tell me. You know what she said? Maybe you need to find a smart guy. <laughs> 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 See, but it was a great day. It was a great day. And, and, and as we got to the restaurant, I told my wife, I said, all right. You feel something swelling here. I'm, I'm good. And all of a sudden, my whole top lip. I wish I had a, if I had a mustache, I'd been good, you know. This whole thing's going, booyah! You know, and I'm eating, I'm kind of sitting like this because I don't want anybody to see me. And I, I'm, I'm telling you. And I told her later on, I said it was a spirit. Because I, I had this horrible spirit of depression. I mean, it almost ruined our evening. Not it had nothing to do with her. It was me. But I realized that this wasn't just a physiological thing this time. You know, it, it, it just kind of wore me out. You know, we came home and went to bed and woke up and it was still there. Oh my God. But guess what? This too shall pass. Amen. Amen. I, I, I like the phrase in the Old Testament, and it came to pass. But what you're going through right now, it is going to come to pass because it didn't come to stay. Amen. 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 It comes to pass. So now you know how to keep praying for me. You know, we, we kind of realizes it's probably certain kind of foods. I tell you, I, 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 to be honest, I think when we went to the Thai place, the food was good, but I think there was something in the preserves or stuff that they cook with that affected my body adversely. That's what I think it was, but I, I don't know. I'm glad they had before we started eating AJ Spurs because I would have blamed, blamed JJ AJ Spurs. You got to blame somebody, right? Yeah. You know? You know, I, I, was, about ready to, I was about ready to blame my wife. I got to blame somebody, you know? Opposition is what determines our disposition. <coughs> yeah, I didn't have to get down about this, but I did. It just gets to be. Anybody understand weary? Huh? Anybody understand weary? Yeah. Okay, it's not just, it's not just me. I, I, I'm, I'm just getting weary. I mean, I'm in separate places, you know, where you, want to go, where you want to go to eat, I said, just give me bread and water, I'm good. <laughs> just, getting, just getting weary. But opposition comes to us to work through it so we can succeed and fulfill our call and our destined position. I realize who I am. In spite of what's happening occasionally to my body, I'm, fear I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Glory to God. Amen. I, I'm still going to function in my gifting. Glory to God. Destined people, they stand out in the crowd. Amen. Destined people stand out in the crowd. There's somebody here says this. Don't be, don't, don't be afraid to be different. Be afraid to be like everyone else. Hello? Amen. Yeah. Don't be afraid to be different. You need to get afraid when, when, when you're running, when you're running with the pack that's running against God. Dare to be different. Hmm. Destiny is not determined by our income. Is determined by our outcome. Hello? Destiny is not determined by your income. It's determined by your outcome. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I guess what? One, one thing I do know, God is for me. He's not against me, so I'm going to make it. Amen. 
quickly, let me give you five things. Number one, destined people are decision makers. Quit flip-flopping. Quit saying, I'm going to do this, and then you turn around and do this. Make your mind up. Make a decision. James says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Another scripture says, choose you this day whom you will serve, because, because you can't serve two masters. Amen? As believers, you should never make, you should never make a decision on Sunday morning. Am I going to church this morning? I don't know. Of how I feel. I'm glad Jesus didn't wake up one morning. I'm not sure if I want to do this or not. He was destined. We've got to be destined. We've got to make a decision. My decision to serve God, I don't make that day by day. I made that a long time ago. It is carved in stone. Glory to God. And that's just what I'm going to do. When, when, my, when my children were at home and, and when, whether we were in ministry or not, I don't ever remember my kids saying, Dad, are we going to church today? That's just what Christian people do. Well, that's, I'm sure that's blessing these people on the video <laughs> because they can't, they can't hear the nodding of your head and the rolling of your eyes. You know? <laughs> that's just what the people of God do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. I like when my kids want to come home. Amen. That's right. Yeah, I, 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 I want my kid. Dad, guess what? I'm coming home. Oh, come on. I call Sarah King and the kids log. My dad come on and just hang out. Dad, I'm busy. No, I really need to. You know, they come over a little while. A daddy just likes your kids to be home. Amen. The father likes his kids to come home. Amen. Lord, they come home. The word Sarah is princess. She was always called a princess. She is not a prince. Princess, she is not a princess because she's married to a prince. She's a princess because her daddy's a king. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. And I'm talking about him and I'm talking about me. He's the, he's the king with a capital K. I'm the king with a little K. Glory to God. You know, that's why I call her the queen because she's married to a king. Now, Amen. Yeah. Well, that's kind of arrogant. And that arrogant is right. Amen. We, we need to understand. As, as determined people, we we there, you just need to, you just need to make a decision. That's why when we sang that song, you know, I will adore him. That's a decision. I made a decision. I will adore him. I will be the kind of person that God wants me to be. I am not going to live my life serving God on how I feel I'm going to serve God by my faith. Glory to God. Secondly, determined people are disciplined people. Discipline is a good word. Discipline is a positive word. It is not a negative word. Discipline turns people into disciples. Pa loving parents will always discipline their children. And that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean they hate them. That means they love them. Discipline is an act of love. Punishment is an act of hate. I never want to punish my kids. I don't want to punish my grandkids. But I want to discipline. Why? Because I want them to be better people. So a pastor comes along and says, you know, you know, uh, Diane Perry needs to you, yeah, I just need to discipline you a little bit. All of a sudden, our hackles come up. Mm -hmm. oh, they say, yeah, God disciplined me. Well, he'll never discipline me again because I'm yeah. Those that will not endure the discipline of the Lord, we don't follow him. Yeah. Discipline, the discipline is a bad, it's, it is a good thing. But we haven't taught this in the church. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus did not say, I want to see where you're going, I'm going to follow you and try to bring you out of your mess. He said, I am focused. Here's the deal. You follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Amen. Make decisions. <coughs> Start making decisions just to do what's right. My young, my young brother over here, Matt, for the video, Matt Kahn. <laughs> 
down there visit, spend time with his dad. A wonderful dynamic duo. But in a few months, he's going into the army. Yeah. 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 If you think a dad is bad, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll tell the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of the night for no reason whatsoever, get up. You're going to go to 10 mile hike with a 50 pound pack on your back. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to. You got a choice. It's called discipline. Now, what they're doing, they're doing the job to make you into the man that the army wants you to be. That's right. Yeah. Oh, then, then you got to dress like army people. Yeah. This is called the gig line. Everything. I mean, from here, all the buttons, all the way down to your belt buckle, to your zipper, everything has got to be straight. Tell you what, show up like this. It ain't going to happen. They're going to discipline you how to dress right. I don't want to, I don't want to do all that. I, 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 now I'm not just talking about Matt. I, I've seen this over the years. Kids that don't want the direction of their parents, they, they don't want anyone to tell them anything, so they listen to the military. Dumb. <laughs> back, 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 back in the early 70s, late 60s, there was a Christian comedian named Mike Warnke. My Warnke had big old huge sideburns, and when he signed up for the military, they, they said to him, said, Mr. Warnke, do you want to keep your sideburns? Yeah, I do. And they went, zip, zip, and they put them on an album and gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, disciplined people are dedicated people. I've dedicated myself to this. There's no other option. I, I, it, is, it is a dedication. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm in, I've, made a, I've made a commitment, and I have to do it. Well, you shouldn't put yourself under that bondage. Yeah, you should. I, I'm talking to people all the time, and they tell me, well, you know, I, I can't commit. I said, yes, you can. You can commit, but you won't commit. Because we live in a society that commitment is a bad thing. When society used to be, my word is my bond. Back in the early 1900s, rarely ever did people sign contracts. My grandfather had a farm, and the, and, and the farm next door was being foreclosed on, and my grandfather went to the banker and said, Mr. Banker, I want to buy Mr. I, I want to buy Mr. Brown's farm. Banker said, said Israel, that's a, that's, that's a great thing. Uh, uh, what kind of collateral do you have? He said, I don't have any collateral. He said, how do you expect to buy it? He goes uh, right across the table, he goes, because I give you my word. That's right. Amen. That was a contract right yeah. there. And the story says that granddad every month paid the mortgage on that farm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he'd given his word. God exalts his word above his name. We need to become people that are dedicated to the word. Jesus dedicated himself for your eternity. He didn't go to the cross based on how he felt. He went to Calvary for your need. Number four, determined people are daring people. Anything you do in life is a risk. Yeah. Insurance is a risk. When you buy a house, it's a risk. You, you, you're, making, you're making a commitment for a, a 20 or 30 year loan, it's a risk. Because you don't know that far down the line. <coughs> Years ago, I, had a, I, was, I was at a secular job, I was making great money. You know, and I went out and I bought a van and I bought a Ford Festiva, I think on the same day. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had enough money to pay for it. Came home, my wife had a van and I had that little Festiva and things were good. I bought that beginning of one month and before that month was over, the company I was working for folded. It was a risk. Okay. 
You want to serve God? It's a risk. People are going to mock you. Tell you, that's stupid. Decide to homeschool, that's a risk. So many people told us that homeschooling is risky. It was too. And we won. <laughs> Glory to God. Risk. Oh, marriage is a risk. Huh? 43 years ago, when we got married, we got married because we were in lust. I mean, because we were in love. <laughs> we, were, we were in love. Love is wonderful, but I tell you what. Send PG and a love check. And they will turn your electricity off. Yeah. I preach around the world and, you know, and I got, you know, they gave me love offerings. Sometimes I got more love than I did offerings. Everything's a risk. But you never learn faith from the boat. Amen. You got to step out of the boat. Well, suppose I drown. You might. Yeah. You might. Life is hard sometimes. But I tell you what, when you endure the hard life, it will get to a point that life will become easy. Yes. Someone told me just the other day, oh, Pastor, you know, man, I'm just, I'm waking up every day. And life, life, life is stuck with such a struggle. I'm sure glad I got God on my side. And they, they asked me that. I said, well, I understand what, you, I understand what you're saying. And then I'm, I'm saying this, I don't think I'm so ultra spiritual. But everyday life is not a struggle for me. I wake up in the morning this day that God's going to, God, man, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. And all of a sudden I get slammed. Bam. Okay, fine. Guess what? We keep on going. That's right. Every day's not, every, every day's not a fight. Oh, I've been in a fight, but every day's not a fight. And also, I've, oh my, I'm, I, but that's because I've learned how to fight. Every day is not a fight, but I've learned how to fight, and I've learned how to bring the right people around me that know how to fight. Amen. Now, I'm not getting beat up by the people I hang out with anymore. Because I'd have been shot by friendly fire more than once. Mm. Yeah. Life is daring. I, 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 I dare you to trust God. I tell this round world, so not just because you're here at, um, at the Revival Center and those are here this by the way of video. I dare you, I dare you to faithfully tithe. Amen. I dare you. Because it will get you out of a mind of thinking that the enemy got you. If I tithe, I won't have enough to do such and such a thing. And, but, but we need to understand there is a principle here. And I'm not talking just to you. I am talking to people that are watching this. Uh, and they do. They watch us around the world. I told you about the, the, the fellow in Africa. I preach in, I preach in Africa and, and, and the huge church. And after the guy came to me and said, Bishop, can you come and pray for my, for, for my plantation? I said, absolutely. So the next day myself, him and the pastor, we drove way. I mean, it was, it was like a dirt road probably as far as from here to California Valley. It was in the, I mean, we were in the middle of nowhere. And he finally got out there, and I picked up a handful of dirt, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, don't you dare pray for this property. And I said to the man, I, said, I don't want anything, you don't go about church, I don't want anything from him. But I looked at the square, and he, oh, he was one of the board members of that church. I said, let me ask you, do you tithe? Well, uh, I said, the answer is no. I said, I will not pray for what God has cursed. Amen. I said, the pastor was right there. I said, you owe your pastor an apology because you've been part of thieves and the robbers in his church. That day he reconciled things between him and his pastor, him and God. I don't know how many months later, six or seven months later, I wind up getting a contact, the pastor <coughs> contacted me and told my brother so-and-so that that year he had the best crop he's ever had. 
Because this man heard truth and made up his mind he was going to serve God. And number five, determined people are driven people. These are the people that are motivated when they hear the call of success. <coughs> Determined people are driven people. No longer I'm doing this because I have to. I'm doing this because I want to. But I'm being driven. I'm being pushed. I like the question that's in our poll this week on our website. Matter of fact, you can watch this again by way of alphabet.org. If you go to the menu, there's this place that says weekly poll. We're just taking a poll on that poll. You don't have to give any information. All you do is check a box and then put, push a vote. The question this week is, how frequently, I forget how it's worded, but how frequently do you tell people about Jesus? Amen. Every day, sometimes, when the conversation comes up, and just go, hold us down there. I, you know, if, if there's only one vote on there, I guarantee it's mine because I voted. And I said every, every opportunity I get. <laughs> people, people call my house. Hey, is, is Bobby there? No, Bobby lives here. Oh, I got the wrong number. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't have the wrong number. And I tell them about Jesus. Why? Because I don't think anything happens in my life by accident. This, I, was, I, was, I, was tell, I said this to you guys here on Wednesday. See, we got to tell the story. We got to keep telling the story. We got to tell it over and over and over and over and over. You know, I know who you worship by the ones that you talk about. I know who your God is by the ones you talk about. I'll tell you what, if all you do is talk about yourself, I, 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 I you're your own God. If all you do is talk about money, that, that, that's your God. But I'll tell you what, when you start talking about the God of creation, hallelujah. <laughs> that, that, that died to save sinners. I, I, I shared that with you. It, it, the, the song that says, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Yeah. I'm just a nobody want to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. And we just keep telling the story. Determined people are driven. I was over at Target couple weeks ago and the lady there she had broken her foot and I talked to her once before just you know how you doing and the guy in front of me said to her said how you doing she said I'm doing a lot better so then it was my turn and I paid for my prescription and she, she gave me the receipt and so when she gave me the receipt give me a receipt bad I, I got the I said by the way I said one more time I prayed for you thank, thank you what I'm afraid I'm gonna offend them no, I left her with something. <clears throat> Gotta be driven. Gotta make up mind. There's, there's something in me that's bigger than me. And it's driving me to tell the story. I love to tell the story. To be my fame and glory. Amen. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Amen. You're determined. Your destiny is to be determined. Make your mind up that God has already made the decision for you. And then agree with God's decision. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, I thank you. God, I worship you, Lord God, in the spirit of holiness, Lord God. But I don't stand up here even pretending that I got it all together, Lord. My life is a daily, 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 moment by moment serving you. Lord God, I want I want there to be a call. I want something driving me to tell the story. Lord, I don't want there to be a spirit of guilt and condemnation in my life whatsoever, but I want to encourage and build up and edify the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Father God, we thank you that we can be in the house of God one more time. And I pray, I pray, God, that these have been authentic seeds from the Word of God. 
I pray, God, that we will hear beyond, Lord, the, our, our natural ears that we've heard in our spirit that this is my day. This is my time of destiny. My destiny be determined. Lord, somebody here, you're going to feel, you're gonna feel this insatiable desire to go home and clean the house. And I'm not talking about moving your furniture around. I'm talking about getting rid of the things that have been anchors to your soul. Hallelujah. And then you're going to run a race of endurance. And you're going to receive the prize. I stretch my hands before you right now. And I bless each one of you. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in this place. I bless you. In the name of Jesus. Those that are watching this by way of video. I pray God is going to do countless wonders in your life. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for stopping in today and viewing the message from Pastor Gabe Abdelaziz. Our vision is that your life will be enriched by the teaching of the Word of God and experience victory in your life. We once again invite you to attend the Revival Center at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California. Worship services are Sunday mornings at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information, go to alphabeth.org. Somebody here that you've been watching this, God is calling you and bringing you back home. You run, you hit hidden. God knows where you're at, and He loves you with an everlasting love. And all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, come back in my heart. I repent. I need you. I'm not going to run anyway anymore. I'm going to start running towards you somebody here, you need to hear this. This is a day that God is getting ready to change your life. And if we at the Revival Center, we, we're here. We want to help you. We got plenty of people that we can uh, get back to you and, and they will pray with you and pray for you. <laughs> encourage you. And you want, you're more than welcome to call us here at the Revival Center at area code 805-434-5170. Okay. It's 805- 434-5170 or you can email us at alphabeth a-l-p-h-a-b-e-t-h at t-c-s-n dot net and we love you as, as I pray for those in this room I pray for you right now Father in the name of Jesus the next few minutes I pray that you're going to revolutionize our life give us ears to hear what the spirit of God is saying to us as well as to these that watch us by way of video. God, as we look at the signs of the times, we can tell that Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. Bless, Lord God, this time that we spend together right now. In Jesus' name.